okay, I have a review for a different type of program. It's not a type of program I've reviewed before. It is a replacement for your Finder, or if you're more familiar with Windows, it's a replacement for my computer. Although this is a Mac only program, so if you're a Windows user, this won't be relevant to you. Basically, we all know what the Finder is, don't we? It's the my computer of the Mac that sits down here, or you can have it on your desktop or whatever to browse your files. Well, this is a dual pane finder. So if you like to have dual pane my computer or whatever on Windows, now you have a Mac way of doing that because you can buy various Windows ones, but I haven't seen another Mac one. This is dual pane, as you can see. So you can say go to downloads here and then documents over here then just drag and drop a file from downloads to documents or whatever it makes it, it makes things much simpler now this is really a power user sort of tool because if all you want to do is have a convenient way to drag and drop files or copy and paste files from one place to another then newer versions of the mac operating system has tabs in finder and that should be good enough for the average user but this goes a little bit further because it has lots of power user tools I'll go into in a minute. But let's just take a look at some of the options here. It comes in two versions, a free version and a pro version. And if you get the free version, you can upgrade to the pro pack via in-app purchase. Now let's just have a look at the about box. As you can see, this is registered. It is a pro pack activated and it's the latest version at the time of making this review. Then let's have a look at preferences. We can view files with quick look. So if we select a file, hit space, you want a quick look window. And I'm not going to go into what exactly that is because if you use Finder, you know what it is. Internal, which is basically its own internal version of quick look or open it in preview. Application, go to root when changing drive. Uh, this is off by default. Use plus on numeric keyboard only for file selection. Calculate folder size on space. Move the files to trash. Privacy. Do you want to send anonymous usage statistics to the company? A lot of people don't like that sort of thing, so you can turn it off. I personally don't mind it, so I tend to leave it on in programs, and it might help help um, the company get feedback that may allow them to improve the program. So I do like to leave those options on in programs, but it's there uh, if you need to turn it off. View, size and header and footer, dynamic or bytes, options to always show the tab bar or not, and show folders on top, size and columns, dynamic or bytes, Lots of options. I'm not going to go in every single one. It's going to take way too long. You can link to your Dropbox or Google Drive account here and in it integrates with Dropbox and Google Drive, which is handy. Various shortcuts you can set up, reset to defaults, etc. Appearance, you want to change the font it uses, uh, in which case you can do it then change the font size. Color preset, so it actually has a few themes we can change to. So old school, looks a bit like MS-DOS. Then we have grass, basically a greeny one like you might expect. Homebrew, which is a kind of a bit dossy as well. And novel, which is sort of creamy. Ocean, which is going to be bluey, which also reminds me of DOS. A few of these are a bit dossy. There's a dark one there. I know a lot of people like dark themes. That's why they've added like a dark option to the Mac operating system, things like that. I like a lighter interface myself, but if you like that, there is a dark version. There's a red sort of look there called Red Sands. There's a silvery look, which is kind of a gray and unpositive. I would probably uh, either stick on basic or I might go to say homebrew to give it a bit or maybe... Yeah, maybe old school to get a bit of dossy look just for a bit of fun or whatever but the options are there and if you really want to customize it as much as possible you can change the options here instead of just applying a theme with their set settings you can change like background color here and manually change it to the color you want and it's options for selection uh color selection text selection cursor color all sorts so you really really got a lot of options in this program you can disable extensions that you don't need and there's various extensions here, such as for iOS devices. If you know you're never going to need that, you can always untick it. 
Then we have an, ar an ar a archiver tool. So if you want to pack your files and pack them up into a zip, you can pack them up into a zip or a 7-zip or a few other ones here as well. There is no RAW or RAR or however you want to say it, RAR. You, if you're familiar with zip files, you probably see the dot .RAR a lot. And this has zip and 7-zip, but it doesn't have that. So that's something to bear in mind. Maybe if you plan on using this a lot for archiving, but you probably aren't. Compression method. No compression, fastest, normal, slow, max. You can encode your zip with a password here. And we have advanced, and we can untick some options here, such as dragging and dropping, and save on exit, and things like that. Okay, so let's just close that. Then we have an option here. If we downloaded this from the website, we can put in our activation code, which I've already done. If you download the free version from the Mac App Store, then you can purchase it through the Mac App Store as an in-app purchase, or it has the pro version independently, so you don't have to download the free one. You can just go straight and buy the pro one. What I would probably do personally is get the free one and add the in-app purchase to it. But you've got a couple options there. Learn more about the pro pack. If we click that, if we click that, it brings up the website to purchase it, and you can purchase it directly from their website for $30 for one user. And I'm not sure what it is in pounds, but I'll put it in the description. I'll put it as a text overlay on this video as well. But in dollars, it's $30. It's for Mac 10.9 or higher. You can also buy it in various packs here as well. Let's close that for now. We then have more about Pro features. We can check for updates from here. Now, if you buy this from the Mac App Store, there would be no need to check for an update. It will be done through the Updates tab on the Mac App Store. Then we have File, and we can open a new window or a new tab. From there, we can duplicate the app Active tab. We can do a new file or folder here, and they all have shortcuts as well. Get Info, Quick Look, Folder Size, Show in Finder, so you can show it in your regular built-in Finder. You can move, copy, edit, rename, delete from here if you have a file selected. You can compress or uncompress from here and close the window. Edit, pretty straightforward. View, you can view it in various styles. It says full, brief, thumbs, thumbnails, and various uh, options here, including show hidden files. There is a way, at least with third-party programs, to show hidden files in the regular Finder. So if that's all you need this for, maybe look at those options. But if you're using this Commander 1 on a daily basis as your main Finder, then it's right there, either through going to a View menu or a keyboard shortcut, nice and easy. You can also com uh, press Command-R or press Reload from the View menu to reload the page. You can also enter full screen from here, which I might just do a minute. Command is uh, things like searching or search using Spotlight. You can open the system terminal from here, which is kind of like MS DOS prompt or whatever you want to call it on Windows. You can open system console. You can open your disk utilities and ne network utilities from here. You can restart the finder as a root user. You can go to various folders from Go menu, such as go to the downloads folder, go to the applications folder or whatever. There's also a computer here to go to Mac HDD or Macintosh HD or whatever it's called on your system, whatever you have it named. Recent places you've been to, go to folder, go to uh, connect to a server like you can in the built-in Finder. Here under Windows, you can open FTP connections and Amazon S3 connections. I'm not going to go into a big tutorial about that. It's a bit beyond this review. But if you want to connect to an FTP server and folder within the, this Commander One Finder, then you can instead of launching a separate application. As you can see, you can set up a name for it as a new connection. Select if it's an FTP or SFTP. Set your server server there, so your IP address or whatever it is you've been given. Port address and your login details. You can add it to the keychain. You can select the default remote path you want to enter first on the server and you can select passive or active mode from here. It's basically like you'd expect from FTP dedicated program, except you can do it from within your finder or at least your Commander One finder, which could be handy if you're doing a lot of FTP work. You can archive from up here. You can open your FTP or Amazon A uh, S3 connections from up here without going to your menu bar. You then have Q operations listed from here. And over here we have search, 
quick look information and show hidden files so you don't have to find it up here if you want to show hidden files quickly you just click it here there we go as easy as that you didn't even have to put in your system password or anything you just click it and it shows it and you can hide them then you have your views from up here such as your various list views or thumbnail views very handy it's all right there and you have some options your options from down here such as delete and new folder view copy paste move and the respective keyboard shortcuts associated with those actions so it's very powerful now i'm going to go and show you what some of the pro options are to make sure i don't miss anything out but what i will like to point out is it doesn't replace the finder it doesn't overwrite the finder and become the new finder so your default built-in finder will still be the default finder and you will either have to make this a dock icon and click it from here when you want to use it or launch it from the applications folder it won't become the default it won't be used by default for the system it, um, and that isn't a fault of the people who made this program because the Mac operating system is becoming more and more secure and closed down and that is a positive thing it's for security to avoid viruses and hacking etc but you can't do too much customization like that because for a start a good example was previously if you didn't like say the QuickTime player icon even though it's a system file you could right click go to get info then drag a new icon file onto the info window and you would overwrite the default QuickTime icon with a new custom icon because QuickTime player is now classed as a system file and it's locked down you you can't do that no matter how hard you try no matter how many times you drag that icon onto its info you cannot replace its default icon anymore because it's for security system files are more locked down so i don't think there would be any way for the makers of this program to uh give you an installer that will install commander one over the top of the finder i don't think you can do it. i think it's way too locked down and secure now which is a good thing but that is something to bear in mind that commander one is a separate application that you have to run it doesn't run instead of the regular finder it doesn't replace the regular finder Okay, this is the website. It tells you that it is free, at least for the basic version. It's a dual pane file manager for Mac, and it's written 100% in the new programming language Swift, which is by Apple. So it should be very up to date and responsive. It's an alternative finder. You can show your hidden files, choose various, choose various view modes such as thumbnails, unlimited number of tabs you can have open. You can rename upon moving, queue operations accordingly, advanced search with reg expo or whatever you want to call that, uh, support, you can search the content, spotlight search, you see it's very powerful search, it isn't a basic search like you'd have regularly, you have zip and archive and support, a built in file viewer, although you can also uh, select just to open things in quick, uh, quick look. But you also have hex and binary files are supported so you can view hex and binary files and images and html files lists of computers in your local network it allows you to get root access which is probably the main reason somebody might be wanting to look at this finder it's for real power users that need root access they want amazon s3 built-in support they want all this hex and binary viewing they want all that sort of power pro user stuff well if you want if you're a power user that really needed all that stuff like root access in the regular finder but it doesn't have it then you really really want to take a look at commander one you want to at least have a look at the free version download the free version from the mac app store and give it a shot and see if it's what you want and see if it's going to do what you need you can customize all your hotkeys fonts and colors you can add stuff to history and favorites and pro user pack the pro user pack all the stuff i've just been talking about is the basic features that are free but what if you are like i say a real hardcore power user which is the main people are going to be aiming uh, going for this program well you have a pro pack it has a built-in ftp manager you can mount devices you can uh, compress and extract files you can 
integrate it with your Dropbox, Google Drive, or Amazon S3 account. You have a process manager, you have themes, and a terminal emulator. And there is also a 15-day free trial of the Pro Pack available if you need to try out for, uh, these things. So if, say, you're mainly going to be using Amazon S3 and you're not sure if it's going to log in properly, you're worried it ain't go isn't going to work properly, you can get the pack Pro Pack for 15 days and try out all the Pro features to make sure they do exactly what you want. It's FTP Manager I've taken a brief look at. You can mount iOS devices in the Pro version and mount MTP devices or from within the Commander 1 if you have the Pro version. You can log into your S3 account. You can compress and extract. You have a terminal emulator there that's fast and advanced. Google Drive integration, which is kind of like Dropbox. And there, if you go to the site, and I will put a link in the description, there's a full list comparing the differences between uh, free and pro. As you can see, these are all the ones that are not available in the free one. And as you can see, actually, it does have raw support. I was uh, mistaken about that. It does support extracting from raw support. 7-zip I've mentioned. You can mount iOS devices, etc. FTP client. You can share Dropbox links from within it. So if you're a regular user, don't, just going to be doing the basics and all you need is to copy and paste easily, then I recommend you just use the tabs in the regular finder. But if you are a power user who's going to want much more uh, power, such as FTP support or root access, then this is a very, very, very advanced alternative to the regular finder commander one i recommend that you go and at least download the free one or the 15 day free trial of the pro pack and make sure it does everything you want first give it a good look a link will be in the description please like and comment on this video and if you could subscribe to my youtube channel as it only takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot thanks